have a decomposed at the door about where you're standing to greet the people as they would enter the church. Um, he also would always, uh, as exited, he always would, like the deacons always posted it at all the doors to, or anything that he wanted the congregation to see or um, any information that was always posted right behind that glass right there. Uh, our restrooms are here up front. Um, and they have been renovated recently since, uh, the, you know, since Brother Brandon left. Yeah, we'll take a picture of the one who's sitting there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, there's multiple purposes. When Brother Graham was here, this was used as a Sunday school room during Sunday school, which he would have Sunday school before the regular service. Um, and then when he, when they would have special meetings um, and the tabernacle would fill up, um, they designed the doors. So anyway, it was used for multiple. This room would be used for multiple purposes. And, and that as well, there's a few other rooms in the tabernacle that they did. They'd use it for, for multiple things. A lot of it just... Uh, just to kind of give you a rundown on it. Um, and once we get out in the auditorium um, and we can go up, um, you can take any pictures you want. It's, it's perfectly fine if you need it. You don't want to take any pictures. I'll give you time to do that. And then we'll go through the office and back through the baptismal. And, uh, and then that will pretty much conclude uh, the tour. Okay, the little room here off to the right is, uh, is, uh, is the... It's also a nursery, has its own little bathroom in there, um, used more for the mothers that are nursing or something like that. It's, um, they, Brother Branham called it the cry room, cry room. and uh, you'll hear him say it on tape. Um, right about, uh, just mm -hmm. even like Brother Branham had written up on the chalkboard up front. Um, so that's the original pulpit that Brother Branham talks about that floated to the ceiling during mm -hmm. the 37 flood. We still have that, and we still use that at our other location. For, and they would open them up for exiting. Yeah. For coming in the tabernacle, everybody came in the back door. But for exiting, then they would open up the side doors and let everybody out. Then they would go up the side doors. But today, we, we don't now. Uh, we, we try to continue. The uh, crucifix that you see here was given to Brother Branham uh, by Brother Organbright. And he had that made for Brother Branham from olive wood um, that came out of Israel. So this uh, was made of olive wood out of Israel. There's a little light on the ceiling in front of the crucifix, and Brother Branham had a switch put on the pulpit that whenever he would have an altar call, he, mm -hmm. he would turn the light on the, on the crucifix. Um, I'm not really sure the meaning, but it was just something neat that Brother Branham did, and I always kind of like to play with him. You're welcome to at this point. Come in, he would come in this back door back here. This is his office, and we'll go through there and I'll let you see the office and, and the, the baptismal back there. Um, so it's always here. When Brother Graham was at the tabernacle, you'll hear Brother Neville in the background, amen, amen. And that's because he's right here, you can hear his voice. He's always, he's always amen. get here two to three hours early and pray and seek the mind of the Lord for the service. Um, he didn't always make it that early. Sometimes he had to stay out and then they'd bring him in just as service started just because of the crowds. But um, but he would try to come early here and pray and seek the mind of the Lord. And whenever the audience was saying only believe, then he knew it was
baptism they have the mic here. Yes, That's yes, good. and they can turn that on whenever we have a baptismal. Um, okay, this is our baptismal. We still have all our baptismals here. Um, if anybody wants to baptize, we bring them back to the tabernacle. It takes about 20, 25 minutes to fill the pool. We keep the uh, pool empty, though. In all the different sizes, um, from little girls on up to big girls, and makes it really nice that uh, you know they can they can have that and we keep that all nice and neat um and this room was on around for a long time and what what it would uh two deacons would carry this out to the pulpit and would and brother Graham would stand behind it while they were serving communion to the people and um, here's some of the communion utensils or the cups um that we would use was that original now, the time of the, the these top I don't know these top two that are tarnished real bad mm -hmm. I assume they they may have been when Brother Graham mm -hmm. was here but this is just where they would store some of the communion wine and some of the communion um, items this is one of the cups that they did use when they used the single cup mm -hmm. so that would have been back when Brother Branham's time when they used this can I try So it's an old cup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a little bit bigger. And then off to the left of this room here, to my left, is the sound room. And that's where they would control all the tapes and the sound. And they keep it kind of dark <clears throat> in here. Uh, just as if it is light, then it is easier to see in. But if it's if it's dim, then you, the people can't see in. But they can see You know, there was another one that was very similar that we used. Um, it had a little bit brighter color to the, the garments, but everything was, was looking.